Welcome, Abbas Cross Church, and welcome to anyone who has joined with us this morning or at any time following. This is our first gathering since advice was given that Sunday gatherings should cease for the time being as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. You're all very welcome, and don't worry, we cannot say if you're still in your pajamas. For the time that we cannot meet together, we will be posting our services on Facebook and making them available on DVD. It'd be great if those who are on Facebook could make a point of gathering together at our usual 11 a.m. time on a Sunday morning. But you will, of course, have the flexibility to watch at another time. This will be different. In fact, this is about the sixth take uh, to get this right with people interrupting me and, and full phone calls coming through. But this will be a different time. It may be a difficult time. But we will be looking for opportunities as to how we can continue to fellowship with each other. Some of us might have to get used to other technology or learn other technology to meet for prayer or for Bible study. We will do what we can to help us continue to feel connected as a church. Other ideas of op or opportunities will be posted on Facebook, so please keep an eye out for those. As I said, there are those who aren't on Facebook um, and maybe won't even have facilities to, to watch a DVD. So we would encourage you to, uh, if you know of those people, uh, to keep in touch with them and uh, maybe back to the traditional phone call to check in with them and keep up to date, keep them up to date with what is going on. While everything else is shut down, we will be working to maintain the work of Food Bank in Abbots Cross and as part of its network in Newton Abbey. And donations for the Food Bank will continue to be taken at the office of Carmoney Church, uh, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. There's a, a letter on its way out to everybody for whom we have an address, which will provide information on how you can continue to give during this time that we're not meeting together. It will also contain a few flyers that you might use uh, to give to some of your neighbours, uh, offering them practical support at this time, maybe picking up scripts, uh, shopping, that kind of thing. Uh, and this is for you to put your contact details on it if you are in a position to help. If you feel you can't help others uh, and you know people who need help, then please just pass the information on to Michael and we will get something sorted. Please also do let us know if you are self-isolating so that we are aware of that. We are in unique times that will provide unique opportunities and unique challenges for the church at Abbot's Cross and the church across the world uh, to show love to all of those people around us. Thank you. Hi everyone, this is Michael from Abbot's Cross Presbyterian Church. Uh, this is church for the next few Sundays at least, coming straight from the manse to your screens. We're going to worship together today the best we can and I have a few friends from the church who are going to help us First, let me start with a few words from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. It says this, Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. At times like these, the circumstances are maybe a bit scary. We don't really know what's going on, but we can know what God's will for us is in Christ. And it's to rejoice always, to pray continually, and to give thanks in all of these circumstances. Uh, and we can give thanks because God speaks to us in his word. He builds us up. He's the one who helps us in times like this. Uh, and we'll see that even today as we share in God's word together. But first, what I'm going to do is hand over to Judah, because he's going to pray for us. God, thank you for the amazing world that you made. 
Thank you that you love us. Thank you that even though things seem confusing, that you, God, are in complete control. Help us to keep trusting in you. We know that even when things are hard, you are with us. I pray for those who are sick. Please make them better. Give doctors and nurses strength and wisdom. I pray especially for our church family today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Pharisees and some teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled, that was unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews that do not eat unless they give their hand to the ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders, when they, when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions such as the washing of cups, pitchers and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to, to the traditions of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to the human traditions. And he continued, You have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. And again, Jesus called the, called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside the a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull? He asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach, and then, and then out of the body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. He went on, what comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance and folly. All of these evils come from inside and defile a person. Right, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in strange circumstances. Uh, none of us have experienced this before, that we can't meet together as a congregation here in Abbott's Cross. And Lord, it will be strange for us over the next uh, number of weeks and maybe even months. But we just pray, Lord, that that you would be with each and every one of us at this time. We think, Lord, of those who are elderly in our congregation and can't get out so easily to, to get shopping and get whatever they need. And we just pray, Lord, as a congregation that, that we would be showing the love of Christ to, to those who are in need and those who need help at this particular time. We give you thanks, Lord, that our food bank is still operating in uh, slightly different circumstances as well. And we thank you for the work of the team that uh, have been looking after it up to now. And give you thanks for those who have volunteered to look after things uh, in the, uh, as a temporary measure. And Lord, we just think of our young people who have worked hard for exams and won't be able to sit them this year. Our heart goes out to them because of all that hard work that they have already uh, put in. We think of the primary school children who can't go to school and the great upheaval that that's going to be 
uh, not just within the schools but within families as well the difficulties and problems that that's going to bring we think of those who have got underlying health problems and uh, <clears throat> how risky it is for them to uh, to mingle with others lord it's it's so unusual something that um we don't know how it's all going to end but you know because you are the sovereign lord and you know all things and we just pray lord that you would glorify yourself in this whole uh, episode of this uh, coronavirus we give you thanks for the health service for the doctors nurses ancillary staff and all of those who would be involved uh, in looking after patients getting them to hospital or making appointments and everything that uh, that's concerned with our health so lord we just pray all of these things that your name would be lifted high there'd be so many people now looking on the internet listening to sermons and church services and we just pray lord that through all of this that you would draw many people unto yourself that this would be a wake-up call for not just the people of this land but people all over the world a wake up to realize that you are god and that you are sovereign and that you rule over all and lord we just pray all these things in jesus name and for his sake amen How are your hands today? They sparkly clean, germ free, silky smooth maybe or slightly fragrant. Have you picked your 20 second song to sing while you're lathering them up with soap and making sure that you've got all the grit and the grime and especially the germs off your hands? You know, as a nation, we've been battling coronavirus this week by washing our hands and my hands have never been so clean. I've washed them that many times. Uh, it's good that we're doing that. This pandemic is being taken very seriously. It's why I'm coming to you from your tablet or your phone or your TV screen like I'm some kind of televangelist. Uh, but I want you to pause for a minute and I want you to think about how powerful God's word is, how active Christ is in the mess of our lives, even right now. You know, we've been doing this series in Mark a series that I planned months ago and this week of all weeks we land on Mark 7 and it's a story about washing your hands. Uh, did you notice that when Aaron read it through to us? This is a story about clean hands and infected hearts and it's all the more powerful at a time like this. So if you have your Bible let me encourage you to open it and follow along. Today you've got the benefit of putting me actually on pause to go and find a Bible if you want to, uh, if you don't have one with you. But we're going to think about it together. And if you notice in the first verse, some people have returned to gather around Jesus. They're the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who have come from Jerusalem. These guys aren't just a group of snobby religious people, they're the social elites and the movers and shakers of the day. If you're trying to think of a modern day equivalent, it's maybe be the equivalent of being surrounded by a group of politicians or some big time news reporters, uh, those who have a lot of major influence in the world around us, uh, those who can make life difficult for you, the ones who have the power and the opinions uh, that matter to other people. And they've come back uh, to check up on this man from Galilee who's already really, really annoyed them. I can think of other words to describe their attitude towards Jesus, uh, but I get in trouble for saying those words. So you have to use your imagination. But, but here's the bottom line. They really, really do not like Jesus. The last time we left the Pharisees was in chapter 3, and they were livid with him. Why? Well, he had publicly embarrassed them. 
He had healed a man on the Sabbath in front of all the people. He'd made them look petty and stupid and vindictive and they were enraged about it. So enraged, in fact, that at the end of the story, it ends with them plotting how they might kill Jesus. And then they're silent, but now they're back. So we can assume one thing. They're looking for a way to kill Jesus. They're looking for a way to take him down, to turn him from the hero that he's become to the zero that they want him to be. And in verse two, they think they see a way how. They saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were unclean, that is unwashed. They spotted the blokes, you know, that leave the bathroom straight from the urinal out the door and they bypass the sink. They found those guys, some dirty disciples who don't wash their hands before they eat their food. Now you might think, what's the big deal here? Well, if you think that, you're probably uh, the bloke who walked out of the bathroom uh, that I just mentioned, who didn't wash his hands. You know, most of us think, well, this is just common sense. If you're gonna eat food, you wash your hands. You wash your hands first, it's good hygiene. But there's actually more going on in this story here than good hygiene. We get an explanation in verse three uh, that the Pharisees and the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. See, the Pharisees were obsessed with washing their hands. Why? Well, because washing their hands in their mind had become a tradition a tradition of a, being a holy thing to do. They thought if we clean our hands, we'll be clean before God. You see, the Lord had told the priests in Exodus that they were to wash their hands and their feet before entering into the tabernacle to serve him. It was meant to be a sign for them that to enter into God's presence, you had to be clean. But what had developed over time was this idea that the act of actually washing yourself, this ritual, this ceremony, was the thing that made you clean before God. It wasn't a sign for Pharisees of needing to be clean in a deeper way before God. This tradition had grown up that washing is what made you clean before God. A man-made tradition had arisen. And that man-made tradition over time Pharisees has, had brought into everyday life. So you want to live your life and be holy in front of God. What do you do? You, you wash your hands. Uh, how do good Jews become clean? Uh, you wash your hands before you do anything. So Mark adds that, that, that there's a fanatical nature about the Pharisees. They didn't stop at just washing their hands only before eating, but after they came back from the marketplace. So in case they had come into contact with someone dirty or some spiritually unclean sinners at the market that they might have touched by accident and they would have washed their hands and it didn't stop there. They would be so obsessed with cleaning that they'd even clean their cups and their pitchers and their kettles as if by cleaning these instruments that they could make those things clean extra holy and pure too. They were obsessed by this idea, if I clean things, I will be clean. And so they look at Jesus' disciples uh, and they point the finger. Verse three, they say this to Jesus, why don't your disciples live according the, to the traditions of the elders instead of eating food with their unclean hands? And notice the accusation is that Jesus, your disciples, they blame Jesus for what his disciples are doing. They're saying, why don't your disciples live by our rules? Don't you know that we're clean, Jesus? We do lots of washing. We do lots of holy and good things and right things that the Lord says that we should do. We clean things, Jesus, in a holy way. That makes us clean. Why do you not do what we do? Now, you might think that's this a mad idea, but, but right now the world is freaking out under the same basic root idea. You know, if I clean my hands, I will be clean. 
If I clean my hands, I'll not get a virus, I'll not get sick, I'll not die. If I just wash my hands and make sure I wash everything around me by my own control, by my own tradition, I will be all right. It's actually not true. You know, you and the Pharisees might have different reasons for washing your hands. You're scared of viruses. They're scared of breaking traditions. But you have the same goal. You think that by doing it, you're safe and secure and clean before God. But those things don't make you clean because there's a deeper problem, a deeper uncleanness. And it's got nothing to do with how dirty or not dirty your hands are. And that's where Jesus turns his response. Verse six, he says, the prophet Isaiah was right about you. You're hypocrites. Don't know if you know where that word hypocrite comes from. It's a Greek word for actually an actor. And in ancient times, actors didn't wear makeup. Uh, instead, actors wore masks. They wore masks. An actor hid behind the mask. The mask was a character uh, hiding the actor's true identity behind it. Jesus says, that's what these Pharisees are. Hypocrites. Actors. On the outside, these Pharisees are playing a role. They look religious and holy and clean but it's all a mask hiding what's behind behind the mask they're the complete opposite and jesus quotes what isaiah says these people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me they worship me in vain their teaching are but rules taught by men the pharisees are doing this they're hiding their true nature behind the mask of religiosity. They're doing all these things to say that they know God and follow God, but underneath they have hearts that don't know him at all. They think that by doing all these religious rituals like washing their hands, that they're all right with God. They think if they do all these religious things, God will see them as good. And this is the world's problem. It's our problem. So many of us live with a Pharisee's heart, um, with a mask of religiosity. We're actors with a mask, trying to tell the world that we're good people. Look at all the things I do that make me good. Some people say I'm a good religious person. I say my prayers or I go to church every Sunday or I read my Bible every day. I give money to help the poor, to help people who are in need. I'm a nice person. I haven't hurt anyone. We all wear masks, like the Pharisee. Masks that project to the world that we're just good people. But in reality, our hearts are far away from God because if we really look at our hearts, we'd realize that they're infected that we've already been carrying around a virus since before we were born. Our problem isn't clean or unclean hands. It's an infected heart. Look down at verse 20 and you'll see Jesus says, it was, it's what comes out of a man that makes him unclean. For from within, out of men's hearts come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. You know, today the world's freaking out. They're running around scared of a virus that we can't see. Running around, frantically washing our hands and avoiding contact with people. Well, the most dangerous, deadly virus has already infected us all. And it's hiding behind the mask you and I thinking that we're good people. Jesus is a doctor and he gives us the real diagnosis of our condition. You and I have infected hearts. Sit and think about that list for a moment. Doesn't the seed of every one of those things not sit in your heart and in your mind somewhere? 
he's never had an evil thought. Sexual immorality, uh, immorality, adultery. Looked and lusted after someone you shouldn't have, you shouldn't look at. Theft took something that wasn't yours when you thought no one was watching. Made excuses. No one was hurt. No one was using that to justify yourself. Envy. Looking at what someone else has, saying, that should really be mine. Someone must have got that from screwing someone over. Really, they shouldn't have that. Maybe I should have that instead. They don't deserve that. I do. You know, the bitterness of something you want that eats away at your heart. What about murder? Thinking maybe that person would be better off dead. Hating another person for what they've done to you to the point where you want to see them hurt, harm. All the ways that we sort of are callous and about life. Person is a waste of resources. What about malice or slander? Ever thought of wicked thoughts about someone? Spread around a rumour, join in the gossip, using your tongue as a sword to cut through a person, cut through their reputation. Deceit, lied because the truth was inconvenient, a little white lie that does no harm. Maybe some lying because you don't want to get caught for something you're ashamed about. What about folly? Just plain stupidity of doing something because you never took the time to think before you did it. Inside every heart is an infection that makes us unclean before God and it's called sin. No amount of hand washing or no mask of religiosity is able to hide us from our true nature before God, before Christ. We are infected sinners. We might have squeaky clean hands, but they're all in hiding an infected heart. What has Jesus come to do? Jesus has come to cure our heart infection. Jesus is teaching that there is a virus that is deadly already right here in every heart, especially in a religious person's heart. And he's the only one who can fix it. In fact, it was the very first lesson that he tried to teach the Pharisees. The first place we met them in Mark was the story of the paralyzed man, where Jesus tried to teach them. He tried to teach them that the greatest and hardest healing that he could ever do for anyone was to forgive their sins. He said it was harder than making a paralyzed man walk. Do you remember their response to him? They said, who does this guy think that he is, saying he's able to forgive sins? Jesus is the only cure that there is for what's going on in here, in your life. There is a virus deeper and deadlier than the one outside that we're all scared of. But there's a simple cure. It lies in the one willing and able to forgive sins, Jesus. The one who died in our place, that all who believe in him might have life in his name. Today, you might be worried about how clean your hands are. You might be worried about a virus out there. That's nothing compared to the virus in here. Don't ignore the cure. Because Jesus says, I'm the only cure that there is. So what are you going to do? You're going to be a Pharisee who walks away, put back on the mask and pretend that you're okay. Or you're going to be a disciple that says to Jesus, I need your cure every day. Your grace every day that I might live. Think about it. Because in Jesus, there is life and life to the full. you've enjoyed our service today and thinking about that together what I want to do is I want to invite you as part of the congregation uh, I want to invite you to pray 
and we're trying to get creative with prayer uh, in doing that and so if you want to send a video in of your prayer for the congregation like you've seen today we want to include the whole congregation in this service so that we feel a part of everything together but i want to pray for what we we've talked about today about our need to have jesus heal us and clean us uh, on the inside to, to make us clean from the disease that we have so i want to pray that the lord would do that and, and close with our benediction so let me pray our father in heaven we want to thank you that you sent jesus into the world to rescue us when we were lost and to save us from the disease, the virus that's already infected our hearts uh, from our sin. And Lord, we thank you that at the cross we see that, that we can have sins forgiven through what you've done for us. Lord, we thank you and praise you that, that we're sinners saved by grace, that we're not good people, but you have made us clean and pure through what you've done for us. So Lord, we pray that grace, mercy, 